Good afternoon, I am Mirella Leonardo. I'm an Editor Fellow at the JIPO, and today I will interview Dr. Jessica Som, who is a Fellow in Gynecology at MD Anderson. Today we will discuss her published paper in our, in our journal called Predictors of Oncologic Outcomes in Patients Receiving Phase 1 Investigational Therapy for Recurrent or Metastatic Cervical Cancer. Hello, Jessica. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. And thank you for uh, the introduction as well as the invitation for the interview. Thank you so much. It was, it's a pleasure to have you here. We are happy that we will be able to discuss this paper. It's a very good work. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Very uh, excited to present our data. Oh, great. So, Dr. Son, uh, can I make you some questions for the audience to be able to hear from you? Certainly. The first question is, uh, if you could please give us a brief idea about why you decided to investigate this specific population of patients with cervical cancer that has been uh, through a phase one clinical trial. Yeah, of course. Um, so cervical cancer in the United States had a dramatic decline in incidence um, over time due to screening efforts as well as the HPV vaccination efforts. Um, however, the relative survival rate for these patients who are diagnosed has not significantly improved. Fortunately, the past 10 years, uh, we have seen a revolution in options for these patients with the advent of targeted therapy. Um, and in general, cervical cancer patients tend to be young with good performance status, which make them good trial candidates. However, um, various known and unknown barriers exist in trial participation, um, which actually is supported by our lower sample size also over nearly a decade of accrual at our relatively resource-rich hospital. Um, so we wanted to study this population to find optimal candidates for referral, as well as to ultimately encourage uh, trial enrollment. Great, great. This is amazing. And reading our, your paper, I had a question. If you have a hypothesis regarding the non-prognostic findings of the Royal Marsden Hospital and the MD Anderson scoring systems, yeah, so that was uh, definitely an interesting find. Um, so just to summarize, the RMH and MDA, MDA scores um, are a scoring system based on clinical and laboratory values that have been shown and validated to predict survival in phase one patients. Um, the MDA score, uh, of course, was developed uh, here at MD Anderson based on over a thousand patients receiving phase one therapy, including uh, 82 gynecologic oncology patients. Um, so our data for the RMH and MDA scores were not significant, uh, but the raw hazard ratios did trend in a similar direction. Um, so I suspect that it's um, kind of like our sample size issue um, being uh, limited uh, in detecting a difference in the zero to five scoring system. Um, and this is particularly true because the range of score in our patients was narrow in our data. Um, and this could relate to the fact that all of our patients were heavily pretreated with a median of three lines of prior therapy, ranging from um, one to seven. Uh, but in general, a larger study is needed. Okay, great. And also, uh, do you believe that this may be because of this specific population, maybe the, the type of cancer? Do you believe we should propose and try to validate a new score for this specific population? And do you have a suggestion about important variables to consider in this case? Yeah, um, so that's a great question. So our data showed that, um, so the absolute lymphocyte count below normal range, um, as well as bone metastasis at phase one trial entry predicted poor progression-free survival as well as overall survival uh, in cervical cancer patients. Um, there has been recent interest in the prognostic role of inflammatory markers in GYN cancers, including neutrophil to lymphocyte ratio, as well as the newer platelet to lymphocyte ratio. Um, but the fact that lymphopenia on its own is independently prognostic is certainly interesting. Um, and if validated, it's you can argue that it's, it's a much easier value to review in a busy clinic day. Um, 
Our effect was particularly strong in patients receiving immunotherapy, which intuitively makes sense. Um, and in addition, the bone metastasis is rare, but it was enriched in our population receiving phase one trials. So I think these two factors could be considered in uh, trial stratification and scoring in the future. Great. Yes, I noticed this association in your paper, and I found it very interesting. We must be dealing with a different population that, that may need another kind of scoring to consider. Definitely. Yeah. So thank you so much for being here, Dr. Son. It was amazing talking to you as always. And thank you for publishing your article with our journal. For sure, it's enriching our journal even more. Thank you so much. Thank you. I also would like to thank for the audience for being here with us in this interview and all the interviews we've been having. Uh, keep atten attention to our news. We have this channel and YouTube. We also have accounts in Twitter and LinkedIn, and you can follow the JIPO for more information. Thank you very much.